Hi everyone, in today's lesson we are going to understand how different properties affect performance of materials. So I have a little challenge for you to begin with. I'd like you to look at these products and uh, pause the video, have a think about what properties they possess. Okay, let's go through the answers. There we go. Now I'm not going to go through them in detail, I don't have the time right now, um, but you can pause it, have a little think about it, and you could even come back at the end and as a recap if you wish. So moving on. Material properties. Different materials have different working properties, which are important to consider when designing a product. There's an old adage in DT circles that goes, that's about as much use as a chocolate teapot just like this one here, as it's been so beautifully demonstrated. Obviously, the chocolate's got a low melting point, so the tea will just pass right through. So here is an example of a material selection chart that an engineer may use. Now, you don't need to, you don't actually need to worry about this at all, but for those that are interested in the science behind it, I thought that some people might like to see this. Now, there are hundreds of these. This one happens to compare strength and toughness. So, for instance, foams down here, this big brown section, foams are not very tough, um, but also not very strong. Comparatively, polymers are plastics um, or rubbers are pretty tough and mediumly strong, whereas composites are very tough and very strong. So you can see how that works. So they will actually use this um, to make decisions about what materials to use for their product. So toughness is the ability to withstand blows without breaking or snapping. So bulletproof vests are a great example. They need to be able to withstand the force of a bullet. Hard hats need to be able to withstand forces of debris falling on them, a brick even perhaps. You want They want to be able to conform a little bit and bounce back without breaking. Tupperware, similarly. You want to be able to put this in your bag. You want it to have a certain amount of, of flexibility built into it. So you don't want it to, to crack. You don't want your soup to leak out of it. Um, but it needs to be fairly tough. Now, the opposite of tough is brittle. I just use this here to help uh, visually demonstrate that. So that's peanut brittle, if you've never had any before. Um, acrylic, for instance, is incredibly brittle. So acrylic is not tough at all. Next is hardness. So this is the ability to withstand abrasion, which is like scratching or denting. So tools and drill bits are incredibly hard. They're actually known as hard, uh, hardened steel. So they're actually hardened as a process um, more than some other metals. And they can, uh, obviously you can drill or take material off, for instance, metals, which are also fairly hard, so they have to be very, very hard. But by doing so, it makes them actually a little bit brittle, so you have to offset that. And then we have vinyl or hardwood floors. So a soft wood floor would not be able to resist um, stilettos walking across it, um, like that, for instance, but hardwoods can. Elasticity, this one's easy. It's the ability of a material to bend and return to its original shape or size. So, for instance, elastic fibres in sportswear. That's why it grips onto you. That's why it allows you to flex out. Um, if it was made of cotton, for instance, then it wouldn't do that anywhere near as readily. Hair bands and elastic bands, for instance, obviously, very, very elastic. And something else we don't think about being elastic per se, but, but is in classified in terms of properties, things like springs. You can compress them and they return back to their original shape. Ductility is the ability of material to deform by stretching along its length. So wire, for instance, is incredibly ductile. You need to be able to take this raw metal material and stretch it out into a long, thin, uh, long, thin wire. Now, to help you with this one, because ductility is one that often goes... Um, uh, gets forgotten. So I have this um, fun little way to help you remember what ductile means. So here is a special uh, kind of duck. Really it's a heron but let's pretend it's a duck. So here is our duck and this little duck uh, when he's looking out for prey or for predators um, where he uh, has a special little ability where he gets very very long just like this one. 
So th hopefully this will be a little visual reminder for what ductility means, the ability to get very long and stretch out. Okay, next we have density. This is the quality of a material to be heavier than another. Now, obviously, mass and density are different things in scientific terms. And density is, in fact, measured by mass per unit volume. So, for instance, kilograms per metres cubed. And uh, how it's useful is, for instance, in the transportation of logs. When I was living in Canada, I actually saw this um, several times. This is how they float logs down the river after um, being... Um, felled much further upstream and they're, they're carried down by these little tugboats. They're also use, it's useful for uh, so sorting recycling by flotation. So for instance they will have a grate which allows paper to flow to the surface um, but uh, the tin cans for instance will sink below um, and move on um, to the next section of the, of the facility. Absorbency, this is an easy one. It's the ability of a material to soak up moisture, but also soak up light or soak up heat as well. So you have to, so think about these as well. So for instance, we have our kitchen towel, which we talked about um, a little bit earlier. Um, so it's very, very absorbent. Uh, jeans are also very absorbent. So they say killed by cotton. If you're going to go out for uh, for a hike. Um, and it's raining, you don't want to be wearing jeans um, because they absorb uh, the water very readily and uh, then obviously that will cool your body down and you can potentially get hypothermia. But we're also thinking about things like black cars and this one's even uh, matte, it's not even shiny. So this is going to absorb a lot of light and heat. So comparatively, if it was a white shiny car, it would not get anywhere near as hot inside um, as this matte black one. Now, natural fibres, just going back to the genes, um, are more absorbent than synthetic fibres. So often people will wear wicking uh, clothes or waterproof clothes uh, when they're um, uh, exercising or going outside. Um, and this, for instance, this cotton um, or wool is very is much more absorbent. And just going back to the uh, absorption of light and heat, this is why you'll find so many Mediterranean houses are painted white or have terracotta roofs, because both of those things are very reflective of light and heat, so it keeps them nice and cool. Next we have malleability. This is the ability of material to permanently deform in all directions without cracking. So for instance, if you're going to bash away a piece of sheet material to create a custom part for a motorcycle. Paper clips, of course, are very malleable. We've all played with paper clips before. And putty or blue tack. I'm often playing with a little fiddling with a little piece of blue tack myself. You can make all sorts of little fun shapes, so they're very malleable. Next we have strength. That's the ability to withstand forces without breaking. So for instance, tug of war ropes. If you pull on both ends, it shouldn't, shouldn't snap because it's very strong. Bridge resisting compression. We have all sorts of forces being applied that so needs to be very strong to allow uh, trucks to, to uh, move over it. Surfboards on the wave. Uh, Kevlar motorcycle jackets are also very strong. So they need to be able to, to withstand um, uh, uh, not only abrasion, but also impact should a cyclist come off during an accident. Fusibility. This is a tricky one. This is the ability of a material to change uh, into a liquid or molten state when it's heated to its melting point. You might be thinking, what's this really for? But this is very much during the manufacturing stage of making a product. So, for instance, here we have solder. It has a very low melting point, so it's very fusible. It can go into its liquid state very quickly. And thermoplastic recycling. This is really useful because you have to be able to chip the different parts of the plastic uh, and in order to then give it a big surface area so that you can then heat it to its melting point before it's then blow moulded uh, to make a new product. Next we have conductivity. This is the ability of material to transfer either heat energy or electrical energy. So copper wire is very electrically conductive. That's why it's used in all our wiring. Um, in fact, gold is only one is one material that's um, actually more conductive, but surprisingly enough, we don't use it because <laughs> it would be way too expensive. Uh, touch screens 
are also uh, electrically conductive. So when you actually touch a touch screen, because of the moisture and uh, electrical potential in your finger, you actually create a circuit which allows you to be able to interact with the screen. That's how it works. Cooking pans, of course, are very thermally conductive. Um, and some of the best cookware in the world is actually made of copper. So copper's conductively and electrically conductive. And of course, the opposite of a conductor is an insulator. So it's recall time. That's a lot of new words. So I, you can either come up with a mnemonic or an acronym to help you remember yourself, or you can use the one that I've come up for you. It's the Dams FC. So like a um, very powerful football club. So T-H-E-D-D-A-M-S-F-C. So the Dams FC. So I would, now I'd like you to pause the video and have a little think about what properties these products possess. So we've got a chopping board, we have a fishing wire, we have an anchor and chain, we have uh, um, uh, gloves which allow you to interact with devices, um, a rubber tyre, and last there we have, uh, those aren't photovoltaic cells, those are uh, water um, uh, solar panels. Okay, so pause the video and then we'll go through the answers in a second. All right, so I hope you had a little thought and let's go through the answers. So the first, our chopping board, of course, is very hard. That's its main property that we are looking for. It want, you want to be able to resist abrasion. If you left it with loads of knife marks, you're going to make it open to bacteria. Um, it's also fusible. Of course, the glass itself, you can melt down uh, and then you can create these large sheets which you can then um, cut to size. Um, density is also another factor, not that you would necessarily know this, but when they are making glass they actually float it on uh, liquid, on molten metal um, to actually create it. Okay, and the fishing line. Well that is very ductile of course, you need to be able to stretch it out into a long thin wire. It's also incredibly strong, you need to be able to resist that big fish on the other end and the force of you pulling on it with all your might. Next the anchor and the chain. Well its main factor of course is that it's very dense, it needs to be able to sink to the bottom of that seabed in order to be able to hold the ship in place. It's also fusible. You can melt it down and you can mould it into shape. It's incredibly strong and it's very tough. You want it to be able to resist impact. Um, and uh, the chain needs to resist the forces pulling against it. Next, we have our gloves. Well, they are, of course, electrically conductive, like we talked about before, so that you can interact with it with your fingers. Um, they were also elastic. Um, many of these gloves often say one size fits all. Um, and uh, one property they do have, which is possibly one that isn't wanted, is that they are absorptive. So if you were to wear them out in the rain, they're probably going to get fairly wet. Our car tyres are very tough. Um, they need to resist uh, impact um, of going over um, stones in the road. They are fusible. You need to be able to melt down the rubber into shape and they are malleable. They have a certain amount of give and movement and then they can bounce back into their shape. And then our, so our solar water panels are of course incredibly absorptive. You want to absorb every bit of light and heat that you can to heat the water inside the tubes. They're also conductive so that um, they can uh, transfer the thermal energy around. Okay so uh, lastly Sometimes you want the best of two or more properties or materials rather for a specific product. So alloys are a mixture of two or more metals. So brass and bronze are both types of alloys. Composites are made of bonding two or more materials together. So for instance, glass reinforced plastics and carbon fiber. Um, here I have a silly little video for you, which is just a bit of a uh, bit of fun if you want to watch that. So to recap, uh, different materials have different properties. Products try to utilise those properties, those benefits. We have the DAMS FC for all the different material properties. And we compare alloys and composites to combine the properties of materials. Thanks for today. Bye.